Space Marines, the Imperium's finest super soldiers, the Angels of Death, all but unstoppable on the battlefield. Especially when it's a whole chapter of a thousand power armored super gamers fighting. But what happens when those armies, those huge chapters, fight each other instead of the enemy? Well, sometimes you get the bad up war, where what started off as an argument over paying taxes turned into an epic war that would destroy entire planets, leave countless more ruined and create one of the galaxy's most dangerous new bad boys. This is the story of the fall of Chapter Master Huron, the tyrant of bad up and the astral class space marine chapter. This is the story of the bad up war. Hi, I am Dutch, the gaming storyteller, and I will be your lore guide for today. Today, we will take a 10 minute dip into the lore and facts surrounding one of the coolest betrayals in the Warhammer 40k franchise. This betrayal was the Horus Heresy before the Horus Heresy was even explored. And honestly, the Bad Up War has been my favorite engagement ever documented by the Fortral team since I joined the hobby back in 2009. Get yourself some delicious snacks and a cup of your finest beverage, and let's get on with the video. Heresy means something very different for space marines than for regular humans in the grim darkness of the far future. While simply not listening to your boss or praying the wrong way can get you called a heretic if you're a normal person, space marine chapters have always been their own organizations, proud and independent. They usually don't take orders from outsiders, unless those outsiders are the High Lords of Terra. Since they're ruling in the name of the Emperor, if the High Lords say something, the space marines are supposed to listen. One of the major rules the Space Marines have to follow is the Codex Astartes, which was designed to stop any Space Marine chapter from getting too large. 1000 is okay, but anything too much bigger is seen as dangerous, because if that many Space Marines go renegade, bad things usually happen. Another big no-no is messing around with Gene Seed. Space Marines need lots of Gene Seed to make more of themselves, but by ancient laws, they have to give some of it to Tech Priests to check there's nothing wrong with it. And actually stealing gene seed from other chapters is one of the few things space marines would consider war crimes. It's incredibly dishonorable and the Codex Astartes definitely does not support this action. And of course, space marines should never work with traitors or heretics. In the Bad of War, all of these things ended up mixing into one big pot and created one hell of an engagement. But the story of the Bad of War didn't start with heresy or backstabbing. In fact, the opposite. The Astro Claws chapter started out with a really good reputation. They were so trustworthy in fact that the Imperium put them in charge of protecting the worlds near an active warp storm called the Maelstorm. They did this by leading other chapters, including the quick and deadly Mantis Warriors and the heroic but unlucky Lamenters. The other Space Marines were technically independent, but the Astral Claws were the ones in charge. Their leadership worked so well that they were starting to clear out worlds all the way into the Maelstorm itself, even fighting the forces of chaos on their home turf. Sadly, their ungodly fortune didn't last forever. After the previous chapter master got rather unlucky and died fighting some orcs, the Astral Claws elected their new leader, a popular and cunning captain named Luft Hurl. Huron had lots of ideas for how he wanted to run things as the new leader. They'd lost a bunch of ships, so he tried to get more. He worked with the other chapters and improved their communications and standings. It wasn't all roses and sunshine though. The leaders of the planet Badab tried to rebel against their space marine overlords, and Huron responded by brutally murdering them and putting his Astral Claws brothers in charge. Huron's problems didn't end there though. The humans in charge of a nearby sector said that they were supposed to be in charge and got angry when their ships started to mysteriously disappear near Huron's planets. Huron, however, was too busy fighting heretics and weird chaos girls to care and had developed quite an itchy trigger finger. The humans nearby sent a fleet right to Badab, including an inquisitor with orders for Huron and his Astral Claws to turn over their payments to Terra and their gene seed. The original idea was to scare Huron into listening, but what happened instead was the fleet being blown up when they tried to force their way through the dense minefield and anti-space guns around the planet. A big oops. Some would say this was generally a bad move, and at this point Huron was pissed. He made an announcement. He and the other Space Marine chapter masters of the Lamenters and the Mantis Warriors said that they were taking over Badab permanently, so they could defend it and the other worlds around the Millstorm. They were not gonna be paying taxes to idiots like the nearby humans, because they totally needed those resources to do their job. Huron finished by saying that it was okay, because the Ultramarines were doing the same things with their own worlds, and Space Marines were supposed to be independent anyway. 
They even threaten to shoot at anyone that tried to look at their newly established shiny little empire. This was a second very bad move, because the humans now asked their own allies to help. And not just any allies. To fight space marines, you need space marines of your own. And it just so happened that the hot-headed Firehawks chapter absolutely hated Huron and his astral claws. The Firehawks agreed to investigate what was happening to all the ships the humans kept sending, and ran into the Mantis Warriors guarding their homeworlds instead. The Mantis Warriors attacked the intruders, boarding and taking their ship, and started the first battle of the Battle War. In retaliation, the Firehawks brought their whole fleet to attack the Mantis Warriors, setting the planet on fire but were dogpiled by all of the Astroclaws and Lamenter fleets, and were now losing even more planets to Huron's tax evaders. Things looked bad for the pro-human side, so bad that the Firehawks decided to call in allies of their own. Are you confused yet? Because I hope you're ready. The Marines Aaron showed up to help the Firehawks with 600 Space Marines, but they weren't very happy about shooting at other Space Marines. In fact, they and the Lamenters basically refused to shoot at each other, even when Huron called in his own allies, the Executioners. The Executioners were Space Marines that were definitely very honorable, but they were also ruthless in battle and heavily armed. The Firehawks and Marines errant were curb stomped by Huron and his allies, and now nearly wiped out and basically unable to have any impact on Huron anymore. Huron the Tyrant owned all the planets near the Maelstorm and Badab, and was sure no one could stop him and his epic new empire. No one that is, except the High Lords of Terra. They were not happy with what looked like a very silly and pointless slapfest between Space Marines, and Huron still wasn't paying his taxes. In fact, it turned out his Astro Claws hadn't been giving Gene Seed for a long time, and it was definitely getting very sus. They told Huron to stop shooting at the other Space Marines and surrender so they could figure out what the fuck was going on. Huron the Gigachat said no, so they ordered him and his allies arrested under suspicion of heresy. The problem is, arresting a Space Marine is already difficult enough. Arresting 4000 of them is kinda impossible. That's a lot of rebels with a lot of bolters and a lot of planet destroying warships. The High Lords were pissed, but they had an answer. An Inquisitor from the Ordo Hereticus was told to ask a bunch of Space Marines to come deal with the rebels. These included the Red Scorpions, who were famously independent but respected, the Tactical and Sneaky Raptors, and the Fiery Fire Angels, and even the Salamanders. Humble, tough, and caring. For Space Marines, anyway. As for the Marines Errant and the Firehawks, the Inquisitor basically told them to be quiet and stop causing trouble. Most of them were too dead to make more problems anyway, but them setting a random rebel planet on fire before listening to orders definitely didn't really help. The Red Scorpions were put in charge of the Imperial attack, closely working together with the Inquisitor. Things seemed to be going decent as they tried to find weaknesses, but then something shocking happened. Huron had called the Imperials and said that he and his allies wanted to talk with the Imperials, under an honorable ceasefire. After all, they were all fellow loyal space marines. They should be battle brothers, right? Could this be? In the grim darkness of the far future, can there really be a reasonable, peaceful surrender? The Inquisitor didn't think so, and tried to tell the Red Scorpion's chapter master not to go. The space marine disagreed. It was a question of honor, and Huron had given his word. The meeting would happen on an abandoned asteroid. As you may have guessed by the length of this video, it did not go well. The minute Huron showed up, he started ranting like a crazy crack addict, yelling at the Imperial chapter masters that they should be siding with him instead. Huron's ally, the Mantis warrior leader, was really not happy about this whole rebel and possibly being called a heretic thing. It seemed like things couldn't get any more awkward. And then some Chaos ships showed up out of nowhere and started shooting at everyone. Huron escaped, but the Red Scorpion and Mantis warrior leadership were both fully killed. It seemed very convenient for Huron that this happened, because now the Mantis Warriors were pissed. They were on Team Huron for good now, almost as if it had been the plan all along. Though the Red Scorpion chapter master was dead, they soon found a replacement. Former captain, now Lord Commander, Cullen, was a talented leader himself and wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. The Imperials would wage war across many worlds and now had even more reinforcements on the way. Lord Commander Kuln and his men would fight the Astro Claws and their allies to punish them for their betrayal, even saving a fortress world from falling to the rebels. But then things got worse, again. 
all of the executioners had now shown up and curb stomped a whole chapter of reinforcements, the Howling Griffins. Beating them up so badly that the only reason they got away was because it would be dishonorable to wipe them all out. Huron wasn't happy that some of the Imperials got away, but he smiled and welcomed the executioners onto Team Huron. After all, the rebels needed all the help they could get right now. Of course, Huron was too smart to just count on his allies, especially when they were too concerned about silly things like letting other space marines escape and honorable battle. He had plans, and for those to happen, he needed space marines. A lot of space marines. And with a single command, the Astor class had now gone full heretic and were growing as much gene seed as they physically could. There were thousands of Astor Claws. Huron didn't want to just lead a chapter of a thousand space marines. He wanted to lead a legion, enough to take over the entire sector. Upon discovering this horrifying fact, the Inquisition called the Astor Claws traitor. The other rebels didn't believe any of this. After all, those Imperials had attacked a peaceful talk, and who trusts Inquisitors anyway? Huron wouldn't lie to them, would he? And of course, this is where things escalate once again. The Mayantars chapter were famous for doing what the High Lords of Terra wanted, no matter what the extreme. And what they wanted was dead rebels. The Minotaur showed up with no warning and basically just started destroying rebel worlds without really talking to the other Imperials. Commander Kuln was probably not a happy boy, especially because they were talking to the Inquisitor directly rather than via him. But he couldn't argue with the results. Especially when the Minotaurs ran into the Lamentus chapter and basically stomped them so badly the surviving Space Marines actually gave up. To make things worse for Huron, by now even more chapters were starting to show up to help the Imperials. Huron's rebels were basically trapped on two sides. The Badab sector itself and the Mantis Warrior home planets, called the Endymion Cluster. The Mantis Warriors were putting up a real fight, killing many Imperial Marines and stealing their ships. But they weren't going anywhere and were incapable of helping Huron or his Astral Claws. Six years after the start of the war, what was supposed to be a declaration of independence and a tax-free empire run by space marines had turned into an epic war, where Huron and his allies were now heretics fighting the whole of the Imperium. It started out with four space marine chapters as allies and was now down to just three. But he still had a whole sector of military might and a lot of rebel minions left. Lord Commander Kuln and the other Imperials had a long way to go before their job was done. For the Tyrant still had many devious plans up his Terminator armored sleeve and had no plans to go down quietly. But that story, and the story of how Badab and the Tyrant fell, is a story for part 2 of this video. Alright, that about does it for today's video. The Badab War is an incredibly in-depth engagement with decades of lore, so there is so much more we can explore together. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the second installment in this mini Badab War video series. If you are searching for another Warhammer 40k lore video to watch, then click right here on the screen. I specifically handpicked it just for you to make sure it would be a perfect fit. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye! Ugh.